7 to 7. 7 to 7 at half. I'm a Michigan fan, and I'm a Big Ten football fan, and I'm young, but I've been into football, whether it's casually or intensely, for quite some time now. I'd say I was intensely into football the beginning of the 2020 season, and I knew about football, especially Michigan football, for several years before then. Nebraska has had two games both of them victories for the Huskers, in which I would classify as some of the most toxic wins I have ever seen in my lifetime as a football fan. Number one, 2020 versus Penn State. I do not know how Nebraska won that game. They had no business winning it. They had no business being up 27-6 to at the half, only scoring three points in the second half nearly allowing a Penn State comeback, and then somehow for one of the just one of the rare occasions in the Scott Frost era, being clutch when it mattered most against a Penn State team that was the definition of anti-clutch. That was one of the most toxic wins I've ever witnessed by a singular football team. This was another one. This was awful. 7-7 seven to seven against an FCS opponent with a losing record last year at the half. I watched a video by Backseat Sports, watched a part of it, and they were describing North Dakota as the Nebraska of the Missouri Valley Conference, which is the best conference. It's like the SEC of the FCS. And they were talking about that and how this game could be closer than anticipated, and they made a lot of good points. At the end of the day, though, I was thinking, there's no excuse to lose to this team, even if they played everyone they faced and lost to last year within single digits. There's absolutely no excuse. Nebraska outdoes them in coaching staff, including Scott Frost. You heard me right. Uh, they outdo them in talent, offensively and defensively, and they have home field advantage. There is no reason Nebraska shouldn't beat this team by more than, I would say, more than a few touchdowns, which they ended up doing, but it took them a while to get there. It really did. And, and the stats at the end that we're going to go over today don't describe how close this game was. Now, to Nebraska's credit, they shut out North Dakota in the fourth quarter, so the argument of, well, the game was closer than the score indicates, that's a valid argument. But at the same time, Nebraska had a very strong, I would say, they had a very strong final 20 minutes, or final 19 minutes of the game, where they shut out North Dakota and scored 21 unanswered points. Very strong performance at the end, very good finish going from a close game that was lingering and they they finished despite it being close for this long and again it was against North Dakota so it can be taken you can rightfully take that as a sign of maybe they're finally getting mentally tough being able to break out of that mental weakness get up more of a winning mentality by finishing late in a close game but also again it's North Dakota so my thoughts are completely mixed on this completely completely mixed and we're going to talk about it today and no i'm not going to sit here and tell you what i told you in the preseason where this team is going to win the west i need to see a whole lot more like a win over oklahoma before that thought even enters my my mind again or at least a win over a big 10 opponent for that matter but nebraska north dakota this was a very close game both teams had success on the ground which just tells you that Nebraska's run defense, and we'll get to this later, is it's busted. The pass defense, Nebraska finally got some sacks today. Garrett Nelson had one in a forced fumble, and they they had some clutch moments where North Dakota, you know, North Dakota's driving and they force him into a field goal. They actually defend the pass instead of allowing a third down conversion into the end zone. So there are some positive signs coming from the pass defense. Like another example would be Schuster, North Dakota's quarterback, had 37 passing attempts for 131 yards. The pass defense is not Nebraska's problem, I've realized. It looked like that in the Northwestern game, and certainly it was, and I think that department's improved. The run defense, and we'll get to this again later in analysis and ramifications, the run defense has been consistently awful. So that's, I don't know how that's going to work against Wisconsin. Minnesota, and some of these other teams that Nebraska faces. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. 
this is a reaction to ne- Nebraska, North Dakota. This is not me predicting Nebraska's future, per se. So let me get right into it and first and foremost, analyze this game. 38-17. This game was a battle until the fourth quarter. It really was. And I thought Nebraska, they came at a halftime and they looked mad. Scoring 10 unanswered points. Timmy Bleakroad made up for his earlier miss before, not before halftime, because that's when North Dakota scored, but on the drive beforehand. Timmy Bleakroad made up for his earlier chip shot miss with a 46-yard field goal. Nebraska was up 17-7. to Burchick, I think it's Burchicker, um, the tight end who was in for an injured Vokalek, Nate. He scored on a 19-yard pass from Casey Thompson beforehand. So it was 17-7 to Nebraska in the third quarter, and I thought Nebraska had come out, had a halftime speech, and they're just going to finish off North Dakota. Well, no. Brady Stevens, on a drive of 69 yards and six plays, he got a 23-yard field goal. Tyler Hoosman then had a five-yard run after North Dakota intercepted Casey Thompson. It was seven. It was seventeen to seventeen, all, all tied up, and then Nebraska finally, finally closed out the game with an Anthony Grant forty-six-yard run, AJ Allen fourteen-yard run in the fourth quarter, and a Chancellor Brewington five-yard reception from Casey Thompson. Speaking of Anthony Grant. He is an absolute star, and I'm going to make a comparison here that might, might I think, jingle, might jingle some bells of other Big Ten fan bases. Anthony Grant can be to this Nebraska team what Kenneth Walker was to Michigan State last year. That's bold. It's absolutely bold, and I'm not saying... I'm not saying that you know Nebraska is Michigan State from last year when I say that, because they aren't. They are in a similar sense. Again, Anthony Grant, the explosiveness he has at running back with the poor offensive line he's been handled, he's a great running back. He's making plays with little support from his offensive line, breaking tackles, having speed that none of us saw coming in a certain sense. He, he nearly had 200 rushing yards today for two touchdowns. He had over 100 yards last, um, last week against Northwestern. He has nearly 400 rushing yards in these two games already. And yes, he will face tougher defenses, but still, four touchdowns, 400 rushing yards. He's a great running back. He's Nebraska's best running back since Divino Zigbo. He's probably better, if we're being honest, too. At least from these two games, what we can initially see. But still, Nebraska and Michigan State, like last year, Michigan State, have a lot of similarities. The difference is the mental toughness. Mel Tucker's team's being infinitely more mentally tough than Scott Frost's team thus far. That could change, but I would say it's more likely than not that it doesn't change, especially seeing the Northwestern game. And MSU was last year, was on a whole nother level of mental toughness. They weren't just good at being mentally tough, or they weren't just mentally tough. They were mentally they were they were mentally resilient. They were like their minds, their mentality was like a fortress, like a concrete bunker that the like the, that the Americans would have built in World War II, or the Germans would have had on their Atlantic Wall when America had a D-Day landing. That's how mentally tough Michigan State was. This Nebraska team, I don't think, is that mentally tough. But they have stars at wide receiver. They have Anthony Grant. They have a good quarterback in Casey Thompson who isn't great, but much like Peyton Thorne last year, he can make good throws. He can he has legs too. I see a lot of similarities between those two teams. Anthony Grant especially is one of them. He's an absolute star. And if this team from this win can get more mentally tough, build some resilience, and finally, you know, use, finally get some momentum going, they can be dangerous on offense. The defense has a lot of work to do. My concern with this team after this game lies with the defense. The Northwestern game and this game have told me that this offense has finally improved from last year. Now, they didn't hang 50 on North Dakota like they probably should have and like they did last year against Northwestern 
of Furman, and they only hung 28 on Buffalo, but still. Mark Whipple was the right hire, and adding him, Mickey Joseph, Brian, I think Brian Applegate, or Apple, I, f- I forget his name, or his last name, pardon me, and Donovan Riola, they, the offense has, in my opinion, looked better, just as explosive, but more consistent. It has its own inconsistency still, very much so, but it's better than last year's unit, in my opinion. The defense, there's no rush defense. And the pass defense, it did not look good against Northwestern. And there were moments in this game where, like, Tommy Hill celebrating after, you know, tackling a North Dakota receiver who converted the fourth down and he thought he held them back. This team and the defense is, it's young. The youth certainly shows they're green. The run defense isn't there. And they don't they don't have the same toughness and the same build that last year's black shirts did. At least not yet. I'm not shaming Eric Chenander or anything, because he's been more of the he's been one of the better, more consistent parts of this Nebraska staff. But the defense has a lot of work to do. Especially when you have Oklahoma and you have Michigan, teams who I think fifty pieced their opponents today. I should double-check that before I say that, but Michigan had 51 points. Oklahoma, I'm pretty confident, they were up by a lot. Yeah, they won 45-13. And then you also have Wisconsin, Minnesota, teams with really strong run games. You have Purdue, who Nebraska's defense matches up with them better, but Purdue's offenses, they still know how to get the job done. The defense has a lot of work to do, especially if Scott Frost wants to stay around longer than this year. Finally, Nebraska finished strong, and I know it was against North Dakota. I know that, and I'm not saying, I'm not asking you to buy in, because I'm not even buying in yet. I need to see how this team does against Oklahoma before I give them any hope of finishing top two or top three in the Big Ten West. If they beat Oklahoma, then there might be a part of me that says, well, maybe your prediction about Nebraska winning the West was right after all in the Northwestern game. Northwestern maybe was just better than expected, and maybe it was a fluke loss. But Nebraska today finished strong. This game was close for three quarters, and they fu- and they closed out. They closed out. And that's all you can ask for at the end of the day with how bad this team looked after the Northwestern game, with the tough situations they were they were they placed themselves in to be honest they finally closed out and executed well a win is a win i know it did not look pretty it was again one of the most toxic wins i've ever witnessed as a college football fan um iowa's today um 7 to 3 two safeties one field goal an iowa touchdown will be forever remembered as two safeties and a field goal that was another one of the most toxic wins that i have seen in college football history. That was a debacle. Nebraska could actually beat that Iowa team after the performance that they had today. But that's my analysis, my thoughts, and some of it may seem jumbled, but part of that is because this team, again, is it's confusing. They have signs, like last year's team, of having great potential, and I think they have even more signs of that than they did last year. But the mental toughness the errors that they make, it's it's just not good. And this team is confusing, and they have to they have to find consistency. An outcome of this game, or a th- an afterthought of this game, is Nebraska has to be consistent moving forward. Mentally, physically, game plan wise, Scott Frost has to be consistent himself. This game, and and you know, despite what he says, he has influence. He totally, he has influence over offensive play calling. You just know that he does. There are moments where he probably steps in and calls the plays or says, hey, I want it to be run this way because it's it's what head coaches who want to be, who are interventionalist do. And Scott Frost is that kind of head coach. Now he stepped off and I appreciate that, but there was a noticeable change of gameplay from the first half to the second. The second was, um, you know, Nebraska just doing whatever, doing whatever worked and being creative. It reminded me more of an more of an actual Mark Whipple offense, where as the first half was just 
a debacle. And at some point, Anthony Grant, I think, ran it like five or six times in a row, which is good because he's Anthony Grant and you can do that and you'll get somewhere. But Nebraska wasn't consistent today. And when they were, it, it, they bared fruit and they won by 21. They played, in my opinion, their worst game of football so far. Their worst. Because Northwestern looked a lot better and played a lot better, and I know for a fact has a far superior head coach to North Dakota. Far superior. Nebraska played their worst game out of the two so far. They have to play better than this moving forward. If they if they want to just hope to go 5-7, and 6-6, seven, six and six, or 7-5, and five, they have to play better. If they play the way they did today, for every game of the season from here on out, they'll probably be a 2-10, 3-9, maybe at best, 4-8 football team. And that is not going to save Scott Frost's job, and that's going to put Nebraska as a program even deeper in a hole. The defense could not help themselves when facing the run. They have allowed 389 rushing yards over the course of two games. That's nearly the same amount of yards rushing that Anthony Grant has had over the course of two games. It's crazy. The run defense was something that I mentioned in in the preseason. Like The pass defense looked like, especially with Caleb Tanner, Ochon Nath- Mathis, who also had a sack today, and Garrett Nelson, it looked like this pass defense could really take a step forward. What I was more concerned about was the run defense because you didn't know. There were some, you know, defensive tackle with all the outgoing transfers and incoming transfers. You didn't exactly know what was going to go on. And Luke Reimer and Nick Henrich, good against the pass or average against the pass, but bad against defending the run. And this team's run defense, part of it's probably because the personnel they have, again, their linebackers are more built and have proven that they're consistently better at the pass than the run, and Nebraska's DNs are more talented, more physical, just better than their defensive tackles. This team is built to be more of a pass defense team, which is great. It actually would work very well against the top of the Big Ten, like Ohio State, for example, who's more of a pass-oriented team. It would work well against a team like, like Michigan State and Some other schools would work well in the Big 12, actually, but Nebraska's in the Big 10. And when facing the run, they can't do a thing. Now, there are moments where they'll occasionally have a play that goes their way in the run department, and that's at least a good thing. That's important. It's not like they, on average, allow 300, 400 rushing yards a game. But, again... They need to get better at stopping the run, and if they can't get better at stopping the run, that goes back to consistency on offense as well. If you can't defend, if your defense can't make stops, then you just have to score, 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 which would be completely going against the grain of the Big Ten, but they could do it. They could totally, totally go against the grain and still succeed, I think, with the personnel they have on offense and the OC that they have. They could totally do that. The question is, will they? Like a lot of things with Nebraska, they have the potential, but you have to wait and see what they end up doing. And leaning into that more, this will be the final point of the video. The Husker offense has so much talent and explosiveness at everywhere except the offensive line. Everywhere but the offensive line, there is talent, there is explosiveness, there is, heck, I'm going to say it, there's even discipline. It's It's crazy. This offense has a a chance to be Scott Frost's best. And I actually, despite the Northwestern game and despite, you know, the struggles that this team has had, I think they will be. The questions mainly rely around the defense. This looks to be the first year so far that Eric Chenander's defense will actually take a step back. And that that might end up axing the entire staff, unfortunately. There's a lot of talent and explosiveness here for the Huskers. Anthony Grant, I want to spend a few more minutes on him. He, again, is very underrated, and for the second straight game, he's been an impact player. Casey Thompson this game went 14 of 21 for 193 yards and two touchdowns and a pick. He had a 32.3 32, 32. QB rating. That's not a good QB rating. So for two games, Casey Thompson is either at a bad QB rating or an average to above average QB rating, which he had against Northwestern. 
Anthony Grant, on the other hand, is dealing with an O-line that looked atrocious in run blocking against Northwestern, and in part because of you know just the moves that he makes, his shiftiness, his speed, he's able to get around that and make some plays of his own. He's been an impact player, and he's been the consistent force of this offense for two games in a row. So I like him. I look at him, and listen, he's a gift to Nebraska. Because like I said earlier, if Nebraska does anything this year, I think you're going to be looking at, again, you're going to be looking at Anthony Grant. You're not even going to be looking at the offensive line. You're going to be looking at Anthony Grant and how even when Nebraska's line collapses— Anthony Grant still finds a way to get some yards or to frustrate Big Ten D coordinators out of their mind by somehow pulling off a massive, explosive run. He's a star. He's an absolute star in the making, and he's solidified his spot at starting running back. The rotation rumors that we were hearing going on, A.J. Allen got playing time today, so you have him in the mix there, but Gabe Irvin, Jacquez Yant, like Ramir Johnson, little to nowhere to be heard. It's A.J. Allen and Anthony Grant, and Anthony Grant's getting the majority of carries because he's that guy. He's the If there's an X factor on this team, I think it's him. He's been the one consistent force on the offense over the two games, and he's been, he was the reason Nebraska took a, a double-digit lead over Northwestern after being down at the half with his two TD runs. He's the reason that Nebraska, that, that they got momentum to close out the game with that big 46-yard run. It's him. Anthony Grant's the guy. He's absolutely the guy. The question is, can the pass game step up around him, and can the offensive line get better to give him more holes to exploit and to give Casey Thompson more time in the pocket? Yes, Casey Thompson, he had a fumble, he had a pick, but he was facing pressure consistently. Nebraska's tackles, I don't even know what to tell you. Watch the game yourself. Their center, Hickson, the guards, which include Turner Corcoran, who has moved inside to guard. I don't know what to tell you either. This offensive line, it it's better than last year's, I think, but last year's was atrocious. This unit's just bad. And I think that it needs to get better. And if it can't get better, then going back to 2021 Michigan State, at least Casey Thompson and these receivers can do better. And that combined with Anthony Grant can give you a good amount of explosiveness to score points and not put all the pressure on your defense. Because last year, the Blackshirts could handle all the pressure. They could handle it all and still keep the offense in close games, give them enough chances to where eventually the broken clock would work in that day, and they would get a play and score. The defense can't do that this year. They can't. They allowed 17 to an FCS program, and they let Ryan Holinsky look like an NFL quarterback, which Ryan Holinsky, I thought from the beginning, was overhated and better than most people thought, but he is not as good as he looked against Nebraska. At least I don't think so. So Nebraska has a lot to learn. They have a lot to, you know, they have a lot to investigate. They have a lot to go through over in scrimmage, a lot of rethinking and retooling to do, but they also have a lot of potential. This has been a common theme in the Scott Frost era. If Scott Frost really wants his job, and if Scott Frost really is a coach that's just, that's just an average coach in the Power Five, If he's just average in the Power Five with the staff he has assembled and the talent he has, then this team will rebound from their Northwestern game. But if he continues to prove time and time again who he is, and at this point we have to go with that because of what happened with Northwestern, we can't change our mind until what we see against Oklahoma and some other opponents, then this team isn't going anywhere. It all falls at the feet of Scott Frost. He's changed staffs over and over again. This is his best one. This is also his most talented roster. Maybe not by star talent or high school talent, but by incoming transfers, experience, just raw talent from what we've seen both in high school and in some of these incoming transfers college play. This is his most talented team. The players aren't the problem. The staff isn't the problem. The problem seems to be him. And 
everything falls at his feet. So if this team succeeds going forward, then a change was made with Scott Frost. Like, he changed himself or improved himself. Or if he didn't, then he removed himself and his ability to mess the team up. If not, then it's time for him to pack his things. And that's where I'm going to end this video. Again, if you're a Husker fan or not, tell me your thoughts on this game down below. It was an interesting game. It was a game where I shook my head and laughed. I'm not even a Nebraska fan. I'm a Michigan fan, but I'm interested in Nebraska, like I am in Ohio State and Michigan State. Those three teams outside of Michigan I take interest in in the Big Ten. The other two because they're rivals, Nebraska because they're a struggling blue blood program, and those are always interesting. Thank you all for watching. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and again, comment your thoughts on this game in depth down below. And if you're on Spotify, make sure to follow the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.